Hi everyone, my name is Kurt Dusek. I'm a solution architect with GitLab, and today I'm gonna to be going over getting started with GitLab CI and CD. As many of you know, GitLab is a DevOps platform that covers the entire software development process. And today, we're gonna to be focusing on the verify and release stages. Now you may have seen this diagram before, but we're gonna talk about what fills in some of these automated build and test bubbles. There are many different ways of running Git and implementing CI and CD, but this approach is our opinion the best way to implement a smooth running DevOps lifecycle. Everything in GitLab CI starts with a YAML file, and that's a declarative configuration format that we use to define jobs and the rules that trigger those jobs. And the GitLab CI file lives within the repository itself. This is a different approach from other CI systems where the configuration is housed and executes in a different system. Our belief is for something to be true DevOps that the developers and the operators should be as close together as possible because this allows those groups to make changes and decisions together within the same system and potentially avoid unannounced breaking changes that can catch teams off guard and generally cause problems. This is a sample CI file. GitLab CI is very feature rich, so we won't be getting into all of the capabilities today. The file is named .gitlab-ci.yaml, and that's a reserved name that sits at the root level of the project. And GitLab will know to read that file at every commit and apply the appropriate jobs based on the rules defined in that file. Each job is a unit of work, and it has several components. The name of the job, the Docker image, and the commands that will be run within that Docker image. Docker is a first-class citizen within GitLab CI. You don't have to use it, but it's very handy for portability and consistency. And what you see is actually a valid CI file. If I only had these four lines in my GitLab CI YAML file, it would work. And it's really that easy. It doesn't take much to get up and running. Here's a bigger job that builds a Go project. In this case, it identifies the stage it should be run in. And the stage is basically the order of operations. We've also identified some conditions under which it should run and some artifacts that will be generated. This is just an overview. So we're not gonna be going into conditions and artifacts today. I just wanna show some things that are slightly more advanced. Now, a pipeline is multiple stages that run in sequence, and you can define the stages as a list in the order you'd like them to run. You can also include various CI files, and this is a very useful feature, since we can include files from other projects, remote locations, or CI files that come bundled within GitLab. You can even create a separate Git repository for CI files, and then reference them from other projects. This comes in handy when wanting to keep automation centralized and consistent across your entire organization. Here, we're referencing the included SAST CI file, and that enables static application security scanning on our jobs automatically. This is a pipeline overview. We can see the branch and the commit that it ran against, and we can see the stages and the individual jobs under these stages. We have quite a few jobs under test, and we can configure all of these to allow failure or run asynchronously depending on the needs of the project. Pipelines can be triggered in multiple different ways. The most common is via git commit. However, you can kick off pipelines to run based on a given schedule, via call to the API, or manually by clicking a button within the application. With all this flexibility, GitLab is more than just a CI tool for source code. It's a full automation platform. YAML and this approach to CI may be new to you. So in addition to the CI files that come bundled in your installation of GitLab, we host many example CI files and repositories on gitlab.com. And these files are open for you to use for your own projects or to contribute to. We have a page that links to many of these repos in our documentation. This is a great starting point, depending on your programming language, the infrastructure you deploy to, or your security concerns. With very little effort, you can have a CI pipeline that automates many tedious tasks. The merge request will probably be the most common place you'll utilize pipelines. On each commit that triggers a new pipeline, the merge request screen updates to show that pipeline and gives visibility into the status of each job. Typically, the same pipeline is run after the merge is complete just to ensure quality and verify the outcome of the merged branch. The natural progression from CI is CD, and deployment environments are first-class citizens within GitLab. This makes it very easy to monitor, manage, and connect to a terminal of various environments. Here, I can see two running environments, production and staging as well as the health status of pods within those deployments. This is the CI pipeline log that shows the history of the pipelines that have run. From here, you can view the details on what specific pipelines were triggered and their status. You can also re-trigger jobs, download artifacts, and view the logs for more details. 
The configurable operations dashboard is very useful for managers or DevOps engineers to get an at-a-glance view of pipelines and their statuses from various projects. This report can be tailored to show details on different projects across an entire group. Kubernetes integration is a huge part of GitLab, and just like Docker, it's a first-class citizen. If you're running workloads on Kubernetes, regardless of cloud provider, you'll be able to easily take advantage of the more advanced features of GitLab. It's also very easy to deploy commonly used apps like Nginx Ingress, Cert Manager, or Prometheus straight from the UI. The integration works with existing clusters or will provision new clusters on Amazon EKS or Google GKE. It's really a matter of entering the credentials to get connected almost instantly. This allows your organization to get started running Kubernetes very quickly. If you have a large number of development builds, that would be a very useful scenario for utilizing Kubernetes. Even if you're not using Kubernetes in production, you can still use it for review apps, staging environments, and take advantage of the many useful management features to streamline those efforts. And if you're new to CI or just new to GitLab and want to take advantage of many of the capabilities quickly, you can utilize Auto DevOps. This is best used for database-driven web apps running Ruby on Rails, Django, Node.js, or something similar. To get started, you only need to connect to your Kubernetes cluster, ensure Auto DevOps is enabled in your project, and add code to the repository. Auto DevOps will containerize your existing application via Docker, run any existing unit and integration tests, perform code quality, security, and license scans, provision a review app, handle your deployments, and more without having to write any automation. It's pretty cool. Let's get to the lab. In today's lab, we're going to add automation to our project. We'll create a new GitLab CI YAML file within our repository. We'll use a template to populate that file, and then we'll make a small change just to understand how it works. Now, I'm starting with a merge request because I want to use a proper Git flow for this change. So the first thing we'll want to do is open our web IDE. Now here, my project doesn't currently have a GitLab CI file, so I can add one by clicking New File. And now I can choose this template and I'll use the bash option. And this simply pre-populates a few very basic build stages to work through. Now I'll commit my change back to my branch. Great. If I go back to my merge request, I'll see a new pipeline is kicked off here. And this is a very simple job. This runs through very quickly. You can view, in fact, it's already almost all the way done. Now, if I go back to my merge request, let's say I want to make a small change. In this case, commit that change back. And all this is going to do is create a job called test three. It's going to be uh, underneath the test stage. And this is just going to cat the readme file or really just print the readme file to the screen. So if I commit those changes back to our branch, I can go back and see how this pipeline is running. And here's our job test three. There it is. There's our readme file. 